الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to our followers, my dear respected brothers in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha قال خذها ولا تخف سنعيدها سيرتها الأولى so when Musa alayhi salam saw a fire uh, in the desert, and it was obviously that was the call Allah Azza wa had made to him, uh, Musa alayhi salam, he proceeded towards that fire and he left his family behind. And obviously when he got there, Allah Azza wa began to speak to him. Allah Azza wa introduced himself to Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah Azza wa Jal told him, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى He said, what's in your right hand, O Musa? Now of course Allah Azza wa knows what's in his right hand, but he wants يعني, Musa alayhi salam to speak so as to be comforted. Because Musa alayhi salam at that point was very scared that um, a call had been made to him, no dia ya Musa. And, uh, and it, it's scary enough, it's at night in a cold desert and his family is waiting for him. So, and this, and this, this call even knows his name, ya Musa, so it makes things even more scary. So Allah Azza wa Jal, to calm him down, he told him, what's in your right hand? And he gave him that opportunity to speak. And Musa alayhi salam spoke. And he said, So he began to say to Allah, it's, it's my staff and I do some things with it. And he, and he listed a few things he does with the staff. Then this is the point that Allah azza wa jal, he, he says to him, Alqiha ya Musa. Drop it, O Musa. So he didn't say throw it, he said to him, drop it. So that means he's very close to him. That's the word alqiha, not iqdifha. Alqiha would mean to drop, and it's right in front of him, right there. So Allah Azza wa Jal says in, in the language of the Quran, فَإِذَا هِيَ حَيَّةٌ تَسْعَى All of a sudden, immediately it became a python, a, a snake. Uh, basically, a hayya is, is different to a thu'ban. Uh, it's different to a jan. These are all names of snakes, but a hayya, it comes from the word hay, which means life, because it's life threatening. It has its fangs coming out, and it's a deadly poisonous snake, and it's a huge snake. That's a hayya. And it wasn't just moving, it was hayyatun tas'a, it was running around. And obviously, you can now imagine that Allah Azza wa Jal had come Musa alayhi salam down when he asked him, What's in your right hand? And now, immediately, the fee builds up again, and there's this snake running around. And he's got no shoe, obviously, because Allah had told him at the beginning to take it off. And he's up the top of a, of a mountain, where's he going to go? And it's all dark. And the, the situation is very terrible and frightening. So Allah Azza wa says to him, قَالَ خُذْهَا وَلَا تَخَفْ He said to him, grab it, don't be afraid. Now, I, I, this is the story of Musa alayhi salam, but I want to bring it to how it's relevant to us. So he says to him, grab it, خُذْهَا وَلَا تَخَفْ and don't be afraid سَنُعِيدُهَا سِيرَتَهَا الْأُولَى You'll be fine, it's going to go back in its original state and I'll make it a staff again. Allah Azza wa Jal wants him to grab it. And obviously we know Musa alayhi salam was afraid and was scared. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that in Surah Al-Naman وَلَّا مُدْبِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ He turned around and he started to run because he was scared. So Allah Azza wa Jal says to him, grab it. Now this is the thing. There are two statements here. There's khudha and there's wala takhaf. Take it, grab it, don't be afraid. Now, normally what's expected in this situation is that Allah, or this is what at least we were expecting, that Allah would tell him, la takhaf khudha. What we're expecting is that it's reversed, that Allah would say to him, don't be afraid, it's all right, no worries, grab it. But Allah Azzawajal doesn't do that. He says to him, grab it, don't be afraid. And you know, obviously it makes sense. If someone fees something, you're going to have to take care of his emotional side before you command him to do anything. If someone was scared of something, I have to calm him down first. You know, don't worry, it's all right, it's going to be good. All right, look, behind this wall, there's going to be such and such and grab it. You know, or something at least along those lines. You calm him down once the person is relaxed. Now he's ready to take on the command. But to command him straight away, and then tell him, don't be afraid. There's something Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us here. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal 
when we answer the question of why did Allah command him before he told him that Takhaf is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting obedience first. Allah Azza wa Jalla is expecting obedience first. And what that teaches us now is that when it comes to the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jalla, then the commandment of Allah is first and foremost before our emotional side. Now why I mention this? Because in recent months, and this is going to keep going, this is not something that's going to stop this attack on Islam and attack on Muslims and all over the place. Sometimes it reaches a peak, then it goes back down, then it reaches another peak. And this will keep happening. And the more it happens, people begin to, to become afraid out in society. So for example, you have any sisters would, uh, would go on the, on, the, on the train, but you know this time she doesn't want to wear the hijab this time around. Why? Allah, I feel what's happening outside. What is Allah saying? Allah is saying, خُذَا وَلَا تَخَفْ Meaning Allah wants the, the commandment to be done first. Wear that hijab and let's worry about the fee later. وَلَا تَخَفْ is the second part. Some brothers, they're at work and he fears that, you know, if I, if I was to ask for a leave for Salat al Jumu'ah, it's going to disrupt yeah, and in my position in that job. And maybe I can't come back here again and it will disrupt my lifestyle and so on. Uh, out of fee, he says, don't worry about Friday prayer. Or out of fee, don't worry about praying because people will see me. That is totally wrong. Allah Azza wa is saying, The first thing you see here is Allah Azza wa command. And then the fee, worry about that later. And you know, subhanAllah, Musa alayhi salam, he extended his arm and he grabbed it. And Allah Azza wa Jal promised him, things will be fine, don't worry. So what do you expect to be a really awkward situation and something that will actually terrify you and hurt you? Actually, in the end, it turned out to be something all right. So what we're expecting is that, hey, obviously anyone that's, and you're going to have to grab it from its tail and to grab it or wherever you're going to grab it from, you're going to expect for it to go back and bite you. And this is the same thing when, when يعني, a Muslim would say, all right, I'm not going to wear my hijab, for example, because if I do it, then I'm going to really get attacked outside. You go out with that mentality, then obviously that's all you're going to get. But you come out with the mentality of uh, meaning things will be fine. This is then and only when Allah Azza wa Jal يعني, will make things easy. So there has to be that certainty in Allah Azza wa Jal making things easy. And we need to really understand that the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal comes first and foremost before our emotional state. If you're afraid of something and, and that fee is what made you not worship Allah Azza wa Jal, then that's terrible. This is the, this is the lesson of Musa alayhi salam. This is how it's relevant for us. That Allah Azza wa Jal, when it comes to you, He's expecting obedience first. Worry about your fear later. That, that can be sorted out. But what Allah wants from you needs to be done the first. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of people who are committed to His deen. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us of the believers. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us of people of the Qur'an, people who benefit from the reminders of the Qur'an. إنه ولي ذلك القادر عليه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين